Hello and welcome back to the channel. For this episode, I wanted to talk about monitor setup for the Behringer X32 and the Midas M32. We'll discuss options like pre-fader and post-fader, pre and post EQ, and other setup options. So let's get started. The X32 and M32 platform gives us 16 buses. We can use those buses as monitor sends, stream audio feeds, subgroups, an OxFed subfeed, and FX sends. Any bus can be any of those options. We have 16 XLR outputs on the rear of the console. These can be routed however we would like, such as stage monitor outputs, stream outputs, matrix outputs, and our house feed. Typically, we'd use the first outputs as our monitor feeds. That keeps things in an easy to follow order. Output 1 would be monitor mix 1, output 2 would be monitor mix 2, output 3 would be monitor mix 3, and so on, up to whatever number of monitor mixes we need. We also have the option to make our monitor mixes as stereo mixes, like we might use for in-air monitors. More on that as we go along. We can make these monitor changes individually on a channel-by-channel -channel basis on each channel. Or you can use the Setup button in the Config tab on the Surface to get a limited version of global presets. You can see a pre, a group, which means subgroup, and a post column for the options that you can scroll through here. Typically, you'll want the last four buses as post, since that is where most people will want their effect sends to be, and that is where the board's default setting for effect sends is already at. You'll usually want your monitor sends as pre. Many times, these global settings on the surface will not perfectly align with what you'll want or need for your own setup. That's why for mine here, you see so many of these listed as custom. Fortunately, you're not left with only these options. As I said earlier, you can adjust these further individually on the channels. If you're using the Xair Edit software, PC or Mac version, then you'll have an even easier option to use for custom settings, at least in pairs. On the Xair Edit software, you can go to any channel, select it, it doesn't matter which channel, then tab over to the Sends tab. In the left, you'll see a globe icon. If you highlight the globe, make it blue, that makes the changes global. Any bus tap point assignments that you make now will have those same assignment changes made on every channel. As I mentioned earlier, typically monitors will be pre-fader. These days, with Sends on Faders options, even dedicated monitor consoles can be pre-fader. Pre-fader Sends or auxes means that your channel fader changes for the house won't impact your monitors. If they were set as post fader, then that means the monitor sends are after the channel fader. In that case, any change on the house channel fader would also change your monitors, which is something you don't normally want. But we have other options and decisions to make here. Besides pre fader, we also need to consider if we want them to be pre EQ or post EQ. Do we want our channel gates and compressors in the monitors or not? Your answers here will usually be different depending on whether you're setting up the board as a dedicated monitor board or doing monitors from front of house. If you choose post EQ, then any EQ changes you make on the channel strip will be heard in the monitors on that channel as well. When doing monitors from front of house, there are two schools of thought here on that. One is that any changes needed in the house will also be needed in the monitors. The other is that your monitors and house speakers are likely too different and your ability to hear the changes are vastly different when doing monitors from front of house, so it's best not to have front of house dictated channel EQ changes in the monitors. I tend to agree with number two myself. On the other hand, it's just the opposite when using the dedicated monitor console. Of course you'd want your channel sends to be post EQ on a monitor console. With a dedicated monitor console, Everything you do will be for monitors. You're not trying to compromise a monitor mix with a house mix. And you would normally have a listening wedge or your own in-ear monitors to hear exactly what the talent is hearing. So let's take a look at what our tap point options are so we can properly set them for any situation. The input setting essentially picks the signal right after the preamp and the high pass filter. No EQ, compression, gate, or fader changes will make it to the monitor. Pre-EQ will capture the high-pass filter and the gate. Post-EQ will capture all of the things already mentioned, plus the EQ. 
And depending on the dynamics insert point on the channel tab, the channel compression can also be captured here. Pre-fader captures everything except the channel fader. The channel fader won't impact monitors for any of these tap points we just talked about. Post fader will include the channel fader. In fact, post fader captures all of these things we just talked about. For post fader, your bus sends, your monitor sends will all change with the channel fader. One thing that you need to be thinking about when making your decision on these options is singers don't typically like singing into compression, especially aggressive compression. Compression that actually sounds great for the house mix can be too much for the singer who will try and fight that compression in their monitors because it's wrecking their natural dynamics. They might not even realize that compression is the issue, but it can cause them to sing harder and then blow out their voice. So that is one reason to consider not sending front of house compression to the vocal monitors or treading lightly if you do. On the subject of pre and post fader considerations for the monitors when doing monitors from front of house, there could be some limited situations where you might want a channel send to have a post fader monitor send. One of those situations might be for tracks, especially tracks where you fade them out. It makes sense that you'd want the tracks that you fade out in the house to fade out in the monitors at the same time. Post fader monitor sends for that channel would do that. Otherwise, post fader buses would be for subgroups, oxfed subs, center fills, and for places that you want those things following the channel fader. And these days, another popular post fader option you'll deal with a lot is a stream mix. When we talk about these kind of tap point options for the sins, I'd be remiss not to mention signal flow as part of this equation that you should be thinking about. The first point the signal from the stage hits in the console is the gain. You want to set your gain properly before setting other levels. Any changes you make on the gain will change what you're sending to all of the buses and house. That includes subgroups, effects buses, front of house, and monitors. If you change the gain after setting the monitors, then you have just changed the monitor levels on that channel with that gain change. We need to discuss our output EQ, but before we go there, I'll mention subgroups since that is also a bus send option. Any bus can be a subgroup or a stereo subgroup if you use two and use linking. Normally, subgroups are used to submix a group of channels, like all vocals or all of the drums. Unlike a DCA, which can serve a similar purpose, a subgroup can have compression or other processing applied to it. We'll talk more about this later. Now we need to talk about the monitor outputs and EQ. In the output 1 through 16 routing, assuming you're starting with your monitors on output 1 as I described earlier, the default 1 to 1 routing will be fine. And the default pink ring for post fader outputs will also be fine. Remember, this is for our outputs, not our inputs. We do want a master fader for each monitor output. Parametric EQ is always available on the outputs. Some people prefer graphic EQs though. If you want graphic EQs on the outputs, go to the effects rack. We'll put them on the 5 through 8 side of the effects rack since 1 through 4 is generally needed for more DSP heavy effects. And now you can choose the slots you want to put your graphic EQs in. Behringer gives us the TEQ and the GEQ. Both are graphic EQs. The TEQ is allegedly modeled on the KTDN360. Pick whichever one you like best. I'm using the TEQ. If you're assigning an EQ to mono monitors, then choose the dual version, not the stereo. If you're assigning an EQ to a stereo bus, that is when you choose the stereo version. They are both two channel EQs, but the stereo version has the left and right sides tied together. The dual doesn't. You can see in this scene, I have a stereo graphic EQ assigned to the stereo left and right front of house outputs. Once you've chosen your EQs, Choose the proper buses, which in this case is bus 1, 2, 3, and 4, and click insert on those buses. Since we're talking about EQs, let's take a look at a shortcut. If you press the effects button and leave it pressed as you're going through the mixes by selecting each one, the window will automatically switch to our inserted effect, which in this case is our graphic EQs. 
and they will follow us from bus to bus. Back on the subject of stereo, we should talk about stereo buses and how to assign them. While many times your wedge mixes will just be mono, many times IEM mixes, your in-ear monitor mixes, will be stereo. We can link pairs of buses for stereo. We always need to link an odd output to an even output. The odd output needs to be first. In other words, we can link output 1 to output 2, but we can't link output 2 to output 3. Output 3 can only link with output 4, odd first to even. We can link the outputs on the surface by pressing the home button, choosing the output on the surface, and then tabbing over and choosing link. In the XEdit software, we can choose the output and then tab over to channel or config, and both of those have the link option available to us to select. When working with monitor mixes and stream mixes, sends on faders can simplify things and speed your workflow. This video above discusses sends on faders in depth. I'd recommend that if you're not familiar with sends on faders, to click on that. If you want to ring out your monitors, this video above explains that process as well as information about the Behringer RTA. Give it a click if you need to know more. On the subject of DCAs and subgroups, the above link has much more info on that. I'll upload a copy of the X32 scene file I used in this video to the Patreon channel. If you like information like this, then please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Affiliate links and my Patreon page link are in the text below. Please check out the other videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>